New Mexico is no stranger to technological discovery. From the Manhattan Project to Microsoft, our state has been home to exploration and invention that has changed the world. KRQE's new series, New Mexico Frontiers, takes a closer look at entrepreneurs and enterprise. In the sneak peek of the series, Chad Brummett takes us to Roswell for a closer look at the International Air Center. Sitting on a lonely tarmac just miles from the alien capital of the world is aviation royalty. Thank you very much. This fuselage, now stripped of its wings and tail fins, was once owned by none other than the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. It's one of the dozens of aircraft that call the Roswell International Air Center home. Well, our storage facility, currently we have 233 aircraft. Tarmacs across the 5,000 acre campus are now home to decommissioned Airbuses, MD-80s, and 737s, a fitting representation of the Air Center's ties to the past and its eye on the future. Three months before the U.S. declared war on Japan after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the U.S. military took control of what would become the Roswell Army Airfield and later Walker Air Force Base. Then they transitioned into the B-17, B-24 bombers and then later the B-29. Months after the war ended, the 509th Composite Group relocated to Roswell. Responsible for the deployment of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the group brought the frontiers of American nuclear weapons into New Mexico's backyard. And that put Roswell on the on the map is a atomic bomb capable bomber base. 12 missile silos were constructed around the city housing SM-65 Atlas missiles, the first intercontinental ballistic missile developed by the United States. Roswell became a primary target, you know, to any adversary such as Russia. And I think that's why Goddard High School when it was built in the late uh, 60s was underground. Walker Air Base closed in June of 1967, taking with it much of the bustle it brought. And it would take decades for the Roswell International Air Center, a municipal airport, to lift off. First order of business was relocating from its downtown airstrip to where it sits now, six miles south of downtown. Immediately we started looking for someone to rent the facilities, all the buildings out here. Slowly but surely, aviation giants like Boeing Airbus and Dean Baldwin brought business into the Air Center, and that business has been booming over the past decade. Thanks to Roswell's proximity to White Sands, its temperate climate, and educational opportunities for area residents. Three times a day, American Airlines touches down here with passengers from Dallas-Fort Worth Airport and the Phoenix Sky Harbor, making regional travel easier for folks in southern New Mexico. There is a Aircraft here every day have from some branch of the service. Naval fighter pilots of the future are earning their wings in Beechcraft T-6 planes like this, while Air Force mainstays touch down for maintenance and training day in and day out. C-130s, F-16s, F-18s, Ospreys, Apaches, Blackhawks. Braking systems and tire testing is one of the biggest missions for the Air Center, thanks to its extra-long 13,000-foot runway. Our runway is also smooth, which is not normal. Normally, they want water to go away from the runway, but we have a special runway uh, permission here that we've worked hard to keep with the FAA that allows us to have those clientele um, come in and uh, make sure that there is some safety going on with their, their, pl their planes and aircraft. It's also a favorite spot for high altitude testing, including Felix Baumgartner's freefall of 128,000 feet in October of 2012, and Google's senior vice president, Alan Eustace, who beat Baumgartner's record in 2014. And uh, instead of going up in a capsule, he actually was testing a suit. So he was taken up into the stratosphere in just a suit and uh, by a, a balloon, and then he was dropped. At 135,890 feet above Earth, Eustace reached speeds of more than 800 miles an hour and caused his own sonic boom on the way down. And so um, that was pretty ins inspirational, you know. Another prominent resident at the Air Center is Sky, a company that is building the next generation of high-speed internet through high-altitude platforms. So their mission is making a better planet and also improving people's lives. With balloons floating aloft at 65,000 feet, 
Their research aims to bring internet equity to rural communities, as well as monitoring and protecting the planet. According to their website, the research they are conducting will be able to detect greenhouse gas emissions in real time, making it possible to support, quote, enforceable, accountable, climate-friendly policies. Eastern New Mexico University offers aviation maintenance courses and the Walker Air Base Museum is reaching younger audiences through outreach and flight simulators for kids. Pick a KC-135 or you can pick a 747 and land in Istanbul, Turkey at 9 o'clock at night in the rain if you wanted to. But a loftier goal is to offer pilot training courses at the Air Center, something property manager and contract coordinator Jenna Lanfor believes is attainable. My goals while I'm here is to attempt to get a flight school at the Air Center. It's imperative for us, um, and if the military comes out here and trains, why aren't we doing this? <laughs> so. As the world continues to emerge from the COVID pandemic and the aviation industry faces numerous challenges in the aftermath, Landfor believes the Roswell International Air Center is ready for the next generation of aviation research, development, and careers. This community loves aviation. A lot of people don't really know that we're here, uh, but the other airports around us that are very similar to our model are becoming uh, full. And so we were just an unknown gift that's in the, the middle of the desert. And so I, I know uh, we're ready for them to come. Cool stuff. That was Chad Brummett reporting. The series premiere of New Mexico Frontiers is Friday, April 14th at 630 on our sister station, Fox New Mexico.